Friends, good morning and greetings. Welcome to the Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplementation where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 27 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we're here for you on the bright side. We love hearing from you, and we welcome your calls at 855-660-4261. If you have questions about the longevity products, if you want to get off your meds or help a loved one get off their meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 855-660-4261 is your call-in number. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear us advertise on the program or recommend on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. They're friendly and knowledgeable. They know all about the longevity products, and they can help you join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $10 fee. You can start a longevity business, join my team, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I can help you build your business. I can do three-way phone calls with you. I'm glad to come out and help you in person do presentations, and you can find out all about it at 866-735-2470. Find out why people are making so much money and why people are enjoying the longevity products so well. You can also get your products, of course, at the wholesale price and enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own longevity business. Call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and click on the Join the Team link, or you can purchase any of the longevity products off the website, brightsideben.com, by pulling down on the shopping cart, and I also want to encourage everyone to check out my blog, PharmacistBen.com. I'm also doing YouTube videos these days with my friend Amanda Rideout, health coach. We're doing skincare videos, and we're also doing miscellaneous healthcare videos. If you're interested in learning more about those, you can hit me up on my email, Ben at KSCO.com, Ben at K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat, O for Oscar. Dot com. If you've written me asking questions, health-related questions, and I haven't gotten back to you, I apologize for that. I get so many emails, and I try to get back to as many as I can. Please, if, I, if you've written and I haven't answered you back, please feel free to write a second time or even a third time and put on the subject heading, second request, or third request, and I'll, I'll get you to the top of the line. And I apologize for not getting back to you. got a whole bunch of Facebook letters, too. Um, asking questions, and I, I, I wish I could get back to everybody personally. I really want to do that, and I'm trying to figure out how to do uh, Skype webinars where we can answer questions maybe once a week. We can do a 20-minute a or 40-minute webinar once a week. I'm still exploring the possibilities. I'm going to get to some of these Facebook questions here. Hopefully, I'll get to a couple of them today. I want to finish talking about fatty acids in the skin. Actually, i got a lot to talk about when it comes to skin, and I was hoping to get to some more amino acids, more protein. We're, believe it or not, we're still talking about bone health and building, uh, and essential fatty acids, of course, have a very important role to play when it comes to bone health and building, but I want to finish up talking about the skin here, and then I think maybe we'll take some questions. I'll read some of these questions that I've been getting, and I'll show you how you can answer this. The, the whole idea about health issues, folks, you don't want to be deluded by diagnosis. You don't want to be deluded by the obfuscation, the confusion that is perpetuated and encouraged by the modern medical model. 
that wants us to be disempowered. So when you got these strange kinds of diagnoses and unusual disease states and nobody's figuring it out, none of the medical professionals that we trust to take care of ourselves understands or can figure out what's going on, you really want to get cut it to the chase, get to the simplest, most basic ideas about how the body breaks down. And that's the way you want to take care of the healing process. Cut to the root, get to the root. You know, it's like diseases, elite, diseases and diagnoses and symptoms are like leaves on a tree. There's 12,800 different diseases, right? There's a thousand different skin diseases. How could there possibly be a thousand different skin diseases? How could there be a thousand different ways that your skin screws up? There isn't. And there isn't 12,800 different ways your body screws up. It's just very basic. And when you get down to the, the root and the trunk of the disease tree and away from the leaves, it becomes so much simpler to figure out how to take care of your body. And I'll show you what I mean when, uh, in our second segment, I'll read a couple of these letters and I'll show you how you get to the root and the trunk of the disease tree and address your disease symptomology at the core, at the fundamental level, so you can really create changes. I'll show you what I mean when you come back from a break. I just want to finish up a little bit here talking about fats and fatty acids as it relates to the skin and the health of the cell and, and inflammation. Inflammation is behind all disease. That's really, if you want to get to the trunk or the root, get to the inflammatory process. All disease is cell disease and all cell disease is inflammation. And all inflammation is immunity. Inflammation is a defensive response. That sums it up right there, you guys. Diseases, disease is cell disease. Cell disease involves inflammation. Inflammation is a defensive response. If you have a defensive response and you want to eliminate it, well, the logical question is to figure out what is the offending agent and then eliminate the offending agent. And then at the same time, make sure you're giving the body the wherewithal, the raw materials for it to do its work. EFAs get turned into raw material building blocks. They serve as building blocks, raw materials for the chemicals of inflammation and anti-inflammation. You can't have inflammation without essential fatty acids. You can't have anti-inflammation without essential fatty acids. In fact, it wouldn't be inaccurate to say that the chemicals of inflammation are actually various forms or derivatives of essential fatty acids, of the fats that we should be getting in our supplements, like the Ultimate EFA, as well as from essential fatty acid-rich foods. This is so important. Think fats, think essential fats, essential fatty acids, think inflammation and anti-inflammation. Now, I should tell you at this point that while all disease states and all cell disease involves inflammation, you can't heal without inflammation. Inflammation is part of the healing process. It's excess inflammation. It's out-of-control inflammation that is the problem. Inflammatory types of chemicals that are involved in the healing process and that can also be problematic when there's too much of them come from omega-6s. Omega-6s get turned into inflammatory chemicals and inflammatory chemicals are healing, but they're also uh, disease causing if there's too much. I hope that's not too confusing because it's really important to understand. Infla inflammation is healing if it's just enough. It's problematic if it's too much. That means omega-6s are healing if there's just enough, and omega-6s can be a problem if there's too much. Guess what we're getting in our modern American, standard American diet? Too much omega-6s because we're all eating omega-6 oils and grains and, and omega-6 uh, uh, plant material, and we're not getting enough of the balancing essential fatty acids. The balancing essential fatty acids to omega-6s are called omega-3s. And omega-3s are calming. They have an anti-inflammatory effect. Nobody gets too many omega-3s, but theoretically, if you did, you'd have too much anti-inflammation. So omega-6s, inflammatory, that's a good thing unless there's too much. Omega-3s, balance it out, anti-inflammatory, that's a good thing unless there's too much. They're both important. In nature, omega-6s are much easier to find. In nature, omega-6s are much more prevalent. Omega-3s are like a condiment or a spice that gets sprinkled on omega-6s like they're a big salad. Omega-6s can be considered a big salad. Omega-3s are like a spice that you sprinkle on the salad to kind of control or modify the flavor. In addition to being raw materials, in addition to being raw material building blocks, omega-6s and omega-3s are also structural components. They're chemical components, they form a, the building blocks of various chemistry in the body, and they also form a structural component, especially for cells and cell membranes. 
All right, hang tight. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this with more good health information. You're listening to The Bright Side. Don't go away. Side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here. Our number today, and we do have lines open for you. It's 855-660-4261. Try to give us a call in this segment so we can get to as many calls as we can in our next segment. I was going to read some, some of my letters and Facebooks here. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow and just finish up on essential fats here. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, including the ultimate essential fatty acids, the balanced EFAs, and the Healthy Star Pack, the EFAs are the ultimate EFAs are part of the Healthy Star Pack. If you're interested in purchasing the Healthy Star Pack and joining the longevity team and joining my personal Brightside Ben team, please call the Brightside Ben phone folks, phone team folks at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. I will be doing a talk today and uh, this afternoon in Longmont, Colorado. So if you guys are listening from Colorado, please join me in Longmont. I'm doing a talk for my friend Trish, Trish Hetherington. We're going to be talking about the digestive system and digestive health, and that's going to be at the St. Stephen's Episcopal Church at 1303 South Bross Lane in Longmont, Colorado. So if you're in the Denver area or Fort Collins or Longmont, love to see you out there. It'll be about an hour, hour and a half talk, and then we'll take questions. I'll talk a little longevity, but mostly it'll be about the digestive system and digestive health, as you know. If you've been listening to this program for any length of time, you know that I believe that the digestive system is the core of good health and the core of the disease state and the disease process. One of the things that happens as our digestive system breaks down is we don't absorb foods, we don't absorb nutrients, we don't absorb vitamins, we don't absorb minerals, and we most especially don't absorb fats. This is so important, you guys. If you've had a gallbladder taken out, it's even worse. If you've had a history of gallstones, you probably have a fat absorption problem. If you have a liver problem, and one-third of Americans have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and many more Americans have alcoholic fatty liver disease, that will compromise your ability to absorb fats. You know you have a fat absorption problem. If your skin is breaking out, if you've got eczema, it's probably a fat malabsorption component. If you have uh, a psoriasis, same thing, probably a fat a fat malabsorption component. If you're breaking down aging, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, menstrual cramps, uh, PMS, uh, menopausal issue, these are all indicators that you may not be absorbing your fats. If you have accelerated skin aging, wrinkles, and dry skin, again, the chances are pretty good you're not absorbing fats especially your essential fatty acids. This is why one of the first things you'll notice when you get on the Longevity Ultimate EFAs is dry skin will disappear. Wrinkles will start to improve. Your skin will look better. If you have eczema or psoriasis, that will improve as well. And it doesn't really take very long. Pregnant women especially want to make sure that they're supplementing with essential fatty acids, especially omega-3 essential fatty acids. As we were saying before our break, omega-6s and omega-3s, they go into making chemicals, inflammatory chemicals and anti-inflammatory chemicals, but they also play a structural role, especially in the uh, in the sense of forming the structure of the cell membrane, that coat, that uh, coating, that, that lining of the cell. The cell membrane is how uh, responsible for allowing oxygen to come through cells. The cell membrane is responsible for an uh, electrical energy, electricity coming into cells, and the cell membrane is important for detoxification of cells. The cell membrane is important for all hormones because hormones sit in the cell membrane. If the cell membrane is out of shape, hormones, insulin, thyroid hormone, peptide hormones, even steroid hormones are not going to work as effectively. It's so important. Omega-6s and omega-3s, not just because of the chemistry, but because of their structural nature. Omega-6s go into pretty much all the cells except for your nerve cells and your brain cells and your eye cells, which tend to be more omega-3 predominant. That's what makes omega-3s from fish oil and from flaxseed oil and from various seeds and grains. That's what makes them so important for the nervous system, for the brain, for nerve diseases, and also for pregnant women. Pregnant women want to be eating lots of omega-3 fats while they're developing their baby in the womb. The dietary omega-3s that moms eat are going to get converted into special omega-3s that build a smarter baby. Special omega-3s called DHA. And EPA, you probably heard of those, DHA and EPA help build a smarter baby. They'll get you a baby with better vision, better hand-eye coordination. So make sure moms-to-be, if you're pregnant and you're growing a baby in your womb, make sure you're getting your omega-3s from 
flaxseed oil or from various seeds, or you may want to get DHA and EPA, which is already pre-converted for you. If you're just doing flaxseed oil or various seeds to get your omega-3s, your body has to convert them into the DHA and EPA that go into your nerve cells and into your eyes and into your brain or into the baby's nerve cells and eyes and brain. But you can get your DHA and EPA pre-converted by using fish oil. That's what makes fish oil so important. That's the rationale between, behind uh, doctors telling moms to make sure that they're getting fish oil when they're pregnant. Doctors used to, used to suggest that pregnant women eat fish, and unfortunately, that's not such a great idea these days, although fish should be a powerful nutritional and building food. But these days, with toxicity in the ocean, that's perhaps not such a great idea. But in any case, the DHA and the EPA, which are types of omega-3 fats, can help build a smarter baby and a baby with better athletic skills and a baby with better hand-eye coordination. So fish have this pre-converted DHA and EPA, which comes from omega-3s. Omega-3s are found in seeds, as I say. They're also found in grass. The technical name for omega-3 is alpha-linolenic acid, or ALA, but we just call them omega-3s. ALA gets converted or broken down into DHA and EPA, and not everybody can do that as effectively, so sometimes it's a good idea just to make sure that you're getting your DHA and EPA straight. You'll get some DHA and EPA in the ultimate essential fatty acid plus. In fact, that's where the term plus comes from. There's two longevity products that have essential fatty acids, two main longevity products. There's the ultimate EFAs. And if you look in the supplement facts on your ultimate EFAs, you'll see 200 milligrams of ALA in the supplement facts. And then if you look, uh, and that's the ultimate essential fatty acids. In the uh, ultimate essential fatty acids plus, you're going to get uh, a little bit less You'll get a little bit less of the ALA, but you're going to get EPA and DHA. So the plus will get you that extra DHA and EPA. The regular ultimate EFAs, you're not going to get that DHA and EPA, but you'll get a little bit more of the ALA. So you've got three main types. You've got ALA. That's the main type. That's the parent type. And then you've got the DHA and EPA. They're all important. Go with the plus. That way you get the DHA and EPA. That's just my opinion. If you get the regular ultimate EFAs, you're not going to get those, those extra, those derivative uh, essential fatty acids, but you'll get a, a little bit more of the parent. I guess it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other personally. I like the plus. And this is especially true, by the way. The plus is important. Uh, it's especially true that the plus is more important if you have nerve diseases, if you have Parkinson's disease, if you're pregnant, or if you want to really focus on uh, eye health or brain health in some way. Then there's a really neat form of omega-3s. I like flax seeds. That's a good form of omega-3s, of the parent omega-3s. And seeds in general are going to be a uh, good, good source of omega, omega-3s, parent omega-3s. But there's a really neat one, a neat seed that you're starting to hear a little bit about. We talked about it a few days ago called chia seeds. Chia is a type of mint plant. It's a, technically, it's a member of the, of the sage family. And chia seeds have been prized for centuries by indigenous cultures, by uh, rural Mexicans and American Indians. Because of their fat content, chia actually means fat. Ch the word chia means oily, actually. Uh, from, it comes from the Indian, uh, Indian language. Chia seeds, in addition to being very oily and fatty and loaded with these omega-3 fats, are also packed with fiber, especially soluble fiber. It's two kinds of fiber. You got your insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. Soluble fiber can be really, really helpful for the immune system. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. Hang tight. We're coming back with more good health information and your phone calls on the bright side right after this. are back on the bright side. Tomorrow we'll, I think I'll get to a bunch of these letters tomorrow and I, I really apologize. If I haven't gotten back to you and you've written to me, Facebook me, I get these long Facebook letters and as much as I want to respond via email or via Facebook, it's just, there's no way I could respond to letters, all the letters that I get and I really apologize, but I try to get to as many as I can. Please put your phone number on letters. Uh, that you send me or even on your Facebooks and let me get back to you by telephone. It's much easier for me to talk than it is to type, as I've said many times. And again, I apologize if I haven't gotten back to you, but you're welcome to put in uh, in your letter first, uh, second request or third request if that's the case. Okay, 855-660-4261. 
855-660-4261 is our call-in number. We've got some lines open for you. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear us talk about on the program, or now the Beyond Organic products, Jordan Rubin's line of organic products, uh, organic dairy products and allergen-free dairy products, allergen-free probiotic-rich cheese. How do you like that? Cheese with probiotics and a cheese without the allergenic problematic proteins. Uh, Jordan, as we had him on our program I think last week, talked about how he breeds his own cattle that produce milk that, do not con- that does not contain the problematic proteins that people react to when they drink milk or when they eat cheese. Uh, you can find out all about those products, the Beyond Organic Products on my website, brightsideben.com. Okay, before we went to break, I was telling you about the Ultimate EFAs versus the EFA Plus from Longevity. They're both good products. I think I misspoke a little bit. Let me just clear that up. They're both good products. They're both wonderful sources of balanced essential fatty acids. The Ultimate EFAs will get you about 400, not about, on the supplement facts, it says 455 milligrams of omega-3 and 190 milligrams of omega-6. The pluses have a little bit less omega-3s and a little bit less omega-6s, but the plus will get you some of the EPA and DHA, which are specifically important for nerve health and brain health and eye health. EPA and DHA go into making nerve cells and and brain cells and eye cells. So you'll get extra EPA and DHA. If you're pregnant, you may want to think about that because the plus will get you 171 milligrams of of EPA, 114 milligrams of DHA. The EFA without the plus, that's only going to get you a tiny smattering, a little blip of DHA, 10 milligrams. Not very much. But you do get more omega threes, so you got to kind of make a decision. In my humble opinion, you, the plus is probably a little bit better. Now, if you want to confuse things a little bit more, and I don't really want to, but I'm going to. There's another essential fatty, uh, essential fatty acid that comes from omega six, and this one is really, really neat. It's called GLA. GLA is very, very helpful for PMS issues, for menstrual, uh, menstrual health issues, and for skin issues. You can actually put GLA right on your skin. It comes from omega-6s, and likewise, you can put omega-6s right on your skin. Acne skin, for example, tends to be deficient in omega-6s. Many skin diseases are associated with deficiencies in omega-6s. Skin oils that keep your skin nice and moist, technically called sebum, S-E-B-U-M, is supposed to have lots of omega-6 in it. But if you don't have enough omega-6s either from your diet or if you're not absorbing your omega-6s, your sebum can become thick and sticky and sludgy, and it can cause problems with breakouts or clogged pores or pimples. If you don't have enough omega-6s in your diet or you're not absorbing your omega-6s, fat malabsorption issues, you're more prone to sensitive skin. You're more prone to sun sensitivity. You're going to be more prone to psoriasis and eczema and sunburn. So you can use omega-6s right on your skin. Uh, You can break open the capsule and put it right on your skin. It'll also help with dry skin and act as a moisturizer, a real moisturizer, because it can help you make your your own skin lipids, your own skin fats. And the GLA applied topically to your skin can also have a benefit. All of this is to say, you guys, essential fatty acids are super, super, super important. They stimulate growth. They're important for skin health. They're important for brain health. They can help with PMS issues. They can help with inflammatory issues. They can help with osteoporosis. They can help with degenerative disease. They can prevent wrinkles. Listen to all the stuff that you're getting from essential fatty acids and... Many people don't absorb their EFAs or don't get them from foods, which is why you want to consider an EFA supplement like the Ultimate EFA or the EFA Plus. Always take your EFAs with meals. Always take your EFAs with your Ultimate Enzymes. It's probably a good idea to take your EFAs with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. And I recommend three capsules three times a day minimum. That's nine capsules a day, but you could easily double that. You could easily take a nine, uh, 18 capsules, six capsules, three times a day. You'll know you have enough essential fatty acids when you don't crave fatty foods. When you don't crave ice cream, when you don't crave cheese, when you don't crave potato chips, you'll know you have enough essential fatty acids. If you have dry skin, you'll know you have enough EFAs when your skin health improves. And if you have menstrual cramps or problems with your menstrual cycle, you'll know you have enough EFAs when your menstrual cycles improve and your PMS goes away. Okay, tomorrow, let's see what I'm going to talk about here tomorrow. Talk a little bit about SPF tomorrow, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the fibers that you get from seeds and some anti 
uh, some skin benefits and, and uh, anti-inflammatory and immune health benefits associated with some of the fibers, and then we'll move on to protein, and we'll also, uh, we'll actually, we'll start off the program tomorrow by taking a couple of letters and also Facebook letters. So that'll be tomorrow on the Bright Side. Time to hit our phones, 855-660-4261 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open for you. Love to hear from you. If you have a success story, you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about the essential fatty acids or any of the longevity products, Love to help you out. 855-660-4261 is our number. Carl, the Truth Raider, welcome back. What's going on? Long time no good, talk to. Good morning, pharmacist Ben. Good to talk to you once again. You uh, very, very sad news in the world of entertainment. Uh, uh-huh. There is a legendary broadcaster who is a voiceover artist, and he invented the Top 40 Countdown. He taught us how to Not count. Not Casey Kasem. Casey yes. Kasem? Did he die? Mel Abdul Kasem. Is that his name? Known as Casey Kasem. What, wait a minute. His name was Mal Abdul Kasem? No, Kamel. Kamel. Abdul Kassem. Oh, really? He was Lebanese, wasn't he? Yes, he was Lebanese. Okay, and I used to listen the... to him every Sunday. American Top 40. <laughs> yes, exactly. He, he's one of my favorite staple broadcasters. He just had that that uh, that fatherly or brotherly or like uncle's voice or something yeah. like that, that broadcasted. It was uh, a great but, voice. You know, he was he did, terrific. He... He did cartoons, too. He was in Scooby-Doo. Yeah, absolutely did Scooby-Doo, and he did yeah. uh, the voice of, um, I believe, Robin in the Batman series, cartoon did series. He? Okay, I think that's right. I think that's right. right. That's bringing like, back memories from my did my childhood in the 1960s. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you know, we know he, he, had Alzheimer's, he had Alzheimer's dementia, didn't he? Casey, no, Casey? there was something going on. They said he was suffering from Parkinson's syndrome. That's too bad. You know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, brain disease, brain diseases, those are so tragic because not only are they preventable, but they're also reversible, if not entirely in a huge, huge way. I get a lot of questions and a lot of phone calls about Parkinson's disease, and it's, it's really tragic to me because it's avoidable, number one, but it's also reversible, number two. And whether it's completely reversible or not, you know, given enough time, I believe it's completely reversible. Most people, by the time they have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, it's not completely reversible because they just run out of time. But certainly you can make a huge, huge difference with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's by using nutrition and by using dietary supplementation, by using oxygenation and breathing, et cetera. So that's kind of tragic. Yeah, they took him off all his nutrition, I heard, a couple days ago. Is that what you're yes. is that what happened? Yeah, they decided to do that. And, and I, think it's, I think that's the tragedy in, in itself right there. They took him off his nutrition. That, that is incurable, you know, it's totally bogus and it's part of the medical model. Wasn't it interesting how what happened when they took him off his nutrients? What happened? God, he died. Yeah, that, was, that was an advanced directive. <laughs> yeah, he died when they took him off his nutrition. Hang tight, Truth Raider. We'll come back. We'll come back to you after our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back after this. the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page, brightsideben.com. Got three plus years of archives starting in November 2010. Lots of wonderful information on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also purchase any of the longevity products you hear us advertise on the program on brightsideben.com. Or you can join the Brightside Ben team by clicking on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, and they can tell you all about the Brightside Ben phone, to, Brightside Ben team, or the Longevity products if you want to purchase any products, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, my personal favorite Longevity product. All right, eight five five six six zero forty two sixty one. What's up, Truth Raider? What what do you got for us today? Well, what is, this is my question. You know that all these diagnoses have the, like a terminal, uh, you know, from the medical model, uh, this is like a terminal conclusion to a, to a certain a certain condition. Now, Parkinson's syndrome, what is that really, and how do we Par- prevent that? It, par- Parkinson's is arthritis of the brain, diabetes of the brain, degenerative disease of the brain, nothing more. And this is so important. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, Carl. All diseases involve degeneration, all, uh, degenerative diseases, I should say, involve degeneration. The body is just breaking down. Under ordinary circumstances, the body heals itself. We see this every time you cut yourself, you know, little cells migrate up to the cut and they seal everything up. If you've got a really deep cut, white blood cells and the immune system takes care of cleaning things out and fibers start to become secreted and they close the wound, etc. The healing process kicks in on its own. You don't have to think about it. If you have a degenerative disease, by definition, it means you're not regenerating, you're not healing. 
A degenerative disease is a disease that doesn't heal. Parkinson's disease is just a classic example of a degenerative disease. Arthritis, autoimmune problems, these are all degenerative diseases. It's the location that's different. But it doesn't matter the location. Carl, I'm going to use my tree. I'll use my tree analogy. If you've got a tree and the leaves are all rotting and they're falling off and they're filled with fungus, does, do, you get a, do you treat the tree differently if the fungus and the mold and the rot is in the left, upper left-hand corner of the, tree, of the leaves or of the, of, the, of the bush, whatever you call the bush on the tree, or if it's the, the lower right-hand corner or if it's the central part of the bush? Does it matter if it's the central part of the bush or the left-hand, upper left-hand quadrant or the lower left-hand quadrant? Of course not. Do you do a special treatment for the tree or for the bush if the leaves are affected on the bottom or if they're on the top or in the middle? That, that's a question for you, Carl. Is, no, you, no, absolutely not. not. You treat right? it from the root cause. Of course, of course. It doesn't matter where the disease shows up. This is obfuscation, which means confusion. It is perpetuated by a model that wants us disempowered. The medical model, I'm not blaming doctors here, because some of them are just as bamboozled as, as we are. Some of them is, are just as brain-addled and confused and, and mis, misled as we are. The, it's not the doctor's fault. It's the model's fault. The model perpetuates disease. The model perpetuates disempowerment. The model perpetuates this deification of itself where we just go to the doctor because we're sick and the doctor will help us and we'll get this drug or that drug. It's like the emperor's new clothes. Nobody notices that the doctor's naked, that the medical model's not wearing any clothes. Nobody notices that we got more drugs than ever before, more drugs than ever before. We're taking more drugs than ever before. We're spending more money on drugs than ever before. We're spending more money on doctors and diagnoses and insurance companies than ever before. But we're not getting better. We're not even staying the same. We're getting sicker. The more doctoring we do, the more drugs we take, the more surgeries we undergo, the more insurance benefits we get, the sicker we are. I mean, I know I, be, I say this every day on the bright side, and Dr. Glidden says it, and Dr. Wallach says it, and a lot of other wonderful healthcare professionals say it, but we still are bamboozled by this idea that the medical model can help us. You guys, the medical model is impotent at the level of degenerative disease. When was the last time anybody ever had their arthritis or Parkinson's or diabetes or kidney disease or autoimmune disease reverse or improve by drugs or by doctoring? When was the last time? Never, because it can't happen. On the other hand, that's the bad news. On the other hand, the good news is we don't need to be medicalized. We don't need to be doctorized. We don't need to be prescriptionized. We don't need to have our organs removed from our body. In fact, there's never a time when you want your organs removed from your body, save for cancer. If you have a degenerative disease like Parkinson's, what you want to do is you want to figure out what the heck is getting into the body that's causing this breakdown, that's preventing the regenerative process from kicking in. I'll spend a lot of time on this tomorrow, but just for now, please understand, number one, if you have a degenerative disease, it can be reversed because it's in the body's nature to reverse. If you have a degenerative disease, number two, a drug or a doctor cannot help you, period. I'm not saying most of the time, I'm saying all of the time because it's not a doctor issue, unless the doctor, of course, is using non-doctor strategies. Number three, if you have a degenerative disease, first and foremost, Focus on what is getting into the body, what is getting into the closed system called the human body, what is entering into the system that is causing this distress. Behind all degenerative disease, you will find a body in distress. Yesterday I did a call uh, for my friend Sanjeev, a, a, a conference call, a bunch of you guys were probably on it. We talked about weight loss, and we talked about body fat, we talked about people who can't lose weight. Well, this is the same thing. If you have a body that's fat, you got a body that's in distress. If you have a body that can't lose weight, you have a body in distress. If you have Parkinson's disease, you have a body in distress. If you have arthritis or cancer or autoimmunity, you have a body in distress. How do you address these, these issues? You figure out what's causing the distress. Most always, it's going to be something entering into the body through the digestive system, which is why the first thing always is to focus on digestive health. Number one, eliminate problem foods. Do 
a food diary. If you want to pick one single move to make, and probably more than one, there's, but there's not a lot, but probably uh, uh, more than one, but if you want to pick one, focus on what foods are causing digestive distress. And don't get this idea, well, I'm gluten-free. It doesn't matter. If you have Parkinson's disease and you're gluten-free, there's something else. Obviously, there's something else going on. Don't say, oh, I eat healthy. It doesn't matter because spinach can cause a problem. Tomatoes can cause a problem. Lettuce can cause a problem. So what we think is healthy may not be. you got to go by your symptoms. If you have a, a digestive issue, a malabsorption issue, something percolating in the digestive tract, you're going to know it by your digestive symptoms. Unfortunately, the brain has a way of kind of uh, shutting things down or, or shutting down perception if something occurs all the time. So if we've had a digestive reaction or a digestive problem ever since we were a little kid, we're not necessarily going to notice it when we're 30 or 40 or 50 because our brain doesn't pick things up if they happen all the time. The brain is always going to look for surprises. It kind of tunes things out when they occur all the time. We get used to things. We acclimate to things. So the brain kind of has a, a way of tricking us into not noticing constipation, not noticing gas or bloating, not noticing nausea or queasiness or loose stools or diarrhea if they occur all the time, which is why it's so important to write things down. Do a food diary. Keep a list of everything you eat and then how, uh, write down how you feel or how your digestive system reacts an hour, two hours, three, four, five hours later. That's called a food diary and it's one of the most, it's the most important step in recovery or regeneration. The second thing you want to do is eat less food. Every time we eat anything, it puts a major burden on the body, even good food. So just by eating less food, we can uh, help the body heal itself. Use probiotics and fermented foods. Next to a food diary, next to eating less food, a good probiotic supplement, a good uh, eating lots of fermented food, making sure you're getting a good quantity of these bacteria is the most important thing you can do. Use the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Use the new Bio Buy organic, beyond organic products from Jordan Rubin. Get on the Soir V. Get on the Amasai. These are fermented dairy products. Even the uh, cheese has probiotics in it. Use fermented beets and sauerkraut and miso and tempeh. Anything you could do that's, uh, that's got, uh, anything you can eat that's a fermented food is going to be in your interest. Get a book called The Joy of Fermentation or get another book called Wild Fermentation. Both of those have wonderful recipes for making your own fermented foods. Make sure you're using bone soup. Bone soup not only is liquid protein ready to work, ready to go into action without requiring a lot of digestive processing, but not only that, it's got coating and soothing materials that can coat and soothe and accelerate the healing of the digestive system. Use the glucogel caps. Use gelatin. Eat cartilage. Make sure you're using the noni juice. Make sure you're using aloe juice. All of these can have a wonderful soothing and healing effect for the digestive system. So much more, but that's a wonderful wonderful start and it's drug free you, you'll feel better you'll sleep better and you can reverse any 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 degenerative disease thanks so much Carl I wish uh, sorry I, had, I went on but uh, call back tomorrow and we'll, and we'll finish up all right that's all the time we have for today on the bright side tomorrow we'll take some of your letters and maybe